Hello everyone, today we are going to read about the ECGs. Now the ECGs uh, lectures I have divided into many subgroups uh, so that it will be easy for us to start from the scratch and uh, go on to learn the most difficult arrhythmias and uh, the management part also. Now first let us start with the ECG rate interpretation. Now before going into the ECG rate interpretation, uh, first we need to understand some of the normal uh, standardizations. Uh, now this, if you see uh, as a normal ECG strip, you need to first understand that the uh, small box, small box is corresponds to one millimeter, and the large box, which constitutes five small boxes, that corresponds to five millimeter, of course. So small box is one millimeter, and the large box is five millimeter. Similarly, in the y-axis also. Y axis also the smaller one is smaller one is one mm and the larger one is five mm. Okay, so these are squares. Now, if you read the standardization here, the speed is 25 mm per second, 25 mm per second, and the height here you can see one millivolt. Uh, sorry, 10 mm is equal to one millivolt. That means this two large boxes are 10 mm, that is that equals to one millivolt, and here. It is 25 mm per second. That means if you see here, 25 millimeter is equal to one second. That is thousand millisecond. That is thousand milliseconds. Okay. So if 25 mm is thousand milliseconds, then how much one small box will be? Okay. One small box. I told one mm. So if 25 mm is equal to thousand millisecond, one mm or one small box equals to thousand. Divided by 25, so that is 40 milliseconds. That is 40 milliseconds. Okay, so that is written here. So one small box equals to 40 milliseconds, and one large box that is that is equal to 5 millimeter will be 200 milliseconds. Okay, so 40 milliseconds or 0. Point, sorry, So 40 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds or 0 0.04 seconds for one small box, 200 milliseconds or 0 0.2 seconds for one large box or one large square. Okay. Now, if you understand this, uh, now we'll see how to calculate the rate. Before going into how to derive the formula, let us just learn the formula. Okay. Now to calculate the rate, we need to uh, remember two formulas. One is 1500 divided by number of small box between two consecutive R waves, between two consecutive R waves. Okay. Another formula is 300 divided by number of large boxes or large squares between two consecutive R waves, between two consecutive R waves. If you see the uh, previous image here, uh, between th this is a R wave and this is a R wave. Between these two R waves, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there are 15 small boxes. So 1500 divided by uh, 15 will be 100 bits per 100 bits per minute. 100 bits per minute. So if there are 15 small boxes, I already told you, one large box will have five small box. So 15 small box will be equal to three large box. So 300 divided by three large boxes, that will be 100. So in either way, you can calculate. In either way, you can calculate. Okay. So here the rate is 100 bits per minute. Now this, that is the formula. Now how to derive, uh, how to reach to that formula? Because uh, in certain ECGs, you may get the speed will be different. The speed will be different. Maybe it may be 50 mm per second, or sometimes it may be 12.5 mm per second. Though this is the standard uh, reference value uh, that is used in most of the ECGs, but sometimes uh, we may change the speed uh, uh, for certain reasons that will be discussed later. So, so we need to understand how to derive this uh, formula. 
Now again, we'll see this uh, 25 mm is equal to 1000 millisecond. Uh, we'll see this formula again. 25 mm is equal to 1000 milli, milli, uh, millisecond is equal to 1 second. Now we'll understand it more. So see. So 25 mm in 1000 milliseconds or 1 second. So if 25 mm in 1000 millisecond, now we will uh, see in 1 minute how many mm, in 1 minute is equal to 60 seconds. So that will be 60 into 25 mm, 60 into 25 mm, so that will be 25 into 6, 150, so 1500, 1500 mm, 1500 mm. Okay. So 1500 mm in one minute. So 1500 mm means 1500 small boxes. 1500 small boxes is covered in one minute. I hope this is clear. So I will be explaining it again. The speed I told is 25 mm per second. That means 25 mm in 1000 milliseconds or in one second. So if one second it is 25 mm, in one minute it will be 60 into 25 mm. 60 into 25 mm. So 16 to 25 is equal to 1500 mm. Okay, 1500 mm. So 1500 mm will be covered in one minute. So 1500 mm means how many small boxes? I told one small box is equal to one mm. One small box is equal to one mm. So 1500 small box will be covered in one minute. 1500 small box will be covered in one minute. So what is rate? Rate is nothing one, but how many bits per minute? Okay, how many bits per minute? So each bit corresponds to one R wave. Each bit corresponds to one. R wave or one uh, QRS complex or you can tell uh, one P QRST complex. Whatever it may be for con uh, convenience, we'll take R wave as one bit. Okay. R wave as one bit. So we'll be we'll be calculating how many R waves in in 1500 small boxes. How many R waves in 1500 small boxes? So that that uh, that's how this formula is derived. 1500 divided by number of small boxes between two R waves and that will give you how many R waves are present inside those 1500 mm, inside those 1500 mm and that will give you the bits per minute. Okay. And I told one large box will be five small boxes. From that you can derive the formula that instead of 1500, if you, if you want to, uh, instead of uh, counting the small boxes, if you want to count the large boxes, so you have to divide 1500 uh, by five, 1500 by 5 so that will be 300 so if you are counting the large boxes you use uh, numerator as, as 300 if you are counting the small boxes you have to use numerator as 1500 so that is how it is being calculated anyway this this uh, uh, the, how to derive this formula is not very important what you need to remember is what is the formula 1500 divided by number of small boxes or 300 divided by number of large boxes Okay, now once we understand the rate, now uh, we'll go to the next step that is how to interpret the axis in the ECG. Now interpreting axis, before interpreting the axis, you need to first understand what, what are the normal axis values. See, there are, uh, uh, we use uh, 12 blades. So normally you use 12 blade ECG. In 12 blade ECG, we have three limb blades. Okay. So in normal 12 lead ECGs, ECG, I will be showing you all those things. In a normal 12 blade ECG, we have three limb blades. Three limb blades. Those are blade 1, blade 2, blade 3. There are three augmented uh, limb blades. Those are AVL, AVF, and AVR. These are augmented limb blades. And there are six chest leads. That is V1, V2, like this, to V6. Okay. And among these, only this limb leads and augmented limb leads are used for axis chest leads are not used for axis okay for axis calculation only the limb leads and the augmented limb leads are used now now we'll see how to calculate the axis now before calculating axis you should know what are the normal axis what are the normal axis of these six leads that means the three limb leads and the three augmented leads now as you can see here this is the lead one uh, position this is the lead one position so lead 1 is 0 degree, this is the lead 2 position, so lead 2 is 60 degree, this is the lead 3 position, this is the negative pole, this is the positive pole, so this is 120 degree, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 
0, 60, 120. So, lead 1, 2, 3. Similarly, AVL is here, AVF is here, AVR is here. AVF is minus 30, AVF is plus 90, and AVR is minus 150. Minus 150. Okay. So, you need to remember this basic numbers regarding the uh, normal uh, uh, regarding the uh, normal axis of each leads uh, to uh, to calculate or to find out the axis of the given ecg okay i'll uh, tell it again lead 1 2 3 are limb leads 0 degree plus 60 plus 120 then the three augmented leads avl avf avr avl is minus 30 avf is plus 90 avr is minus 150 so if you understand this now we will see how to calculate the axis in a given ECG. The first method is the quadrant method and it is the most commonly used method. So what is quadrant method? In this method we will just look at two leads. One is lead 1, another one is lead AVF. Lead 1 and lead AVF. So lead 1 I told this is the lead 1. So this is a minus 180. This is plus 0. This is plus 0 and this is lead AVF. This is the negative pole. This is the positive pole. This is 90. Sorry it is bit so avf will be like this okay so this is plus 90 this is plus 0 minus 90 so this is the avf the avf reduction is towards this this is lead one deduction is towards this okay so we'll see the lead one and the lead avf if if uh, the r wave is positive in lead one okay we always see the rs we always see the rs if R is more than S, that means R is positive. Okay, the net uh, complex is positive. So that will be, uh, so, so we will we'll take that one. I will just tell you. Uh, we will see the lead R, uh, sorry, we will see uh, the R wave in the lead one. If it is positive, the vector direction will be towards this. And also we will see the uh, R wave in lead AVF. If it is positive, the vector direction will be towards this. Okay, so that means the net vector, the net vector, net vector or the axis of the ECG will be in this quadrant, will be in this quadrant. Understood? I will just explain it again. We have to see only two leads, lead 1 and lead AVF. We have to see only two leads in the ECG, lead 1 and lead AVF. We will see the R wave in lead 1. If it is positive, that means R wave will be something like this in lead 1. Then we will see the AVF, if the RVF is also positive in AVF then it will be like this because AVF this is the positive direction and in lead 1 this is the positive direction. Okay. So if the RVF is positive in both lead 1 and lead AVF the net vector will be in this quadrant, in this quadrant. Okay. Remember the normal, the normal axis of the heart, normal axis of the heart is minus 30 to plus 90 minus 32 plus 90 but for all practical purpose if you use the quadrant method but whichever whatever is present in this quadrant that is 0 to plus 90 0 to plus 90 will take us normal axis will take us normal axis anything in this quadrant will take us left axis deviation anything is this quadrant will take us right axis deviation anything is in this quadrant you can tell extreme Axis deviation, extreme axis deviation or northwest axis deviation. Okay. So, from this, we can understand that uh, for a given ECG to be of normal axis, the R wave should be predominantly positive in lead 1 and AVF. Okay, R wave has to be positive in lead 1 and AVF. Now, let us see if R wave is negative, R wave is negative in lead 1 and positive in AVF, positive in AVF then what will be the axis, what will be the axis. So if the R wave is negative in lead 1, so this is the lead 1, R wave is negative, that means the vector direction is towards this, <coughs> towards this, and it is positive in AVF, it is positive in AVF, so vector direction will be towards this. Now the net vector will be in this quadrant, net vector will be in this quadrant, so it will have right axis deviation, it will have right axis deviation. Now this is the quadrant, me quadrant method of finding out the axis. Okay, So yeah, yeah, I hope it is clear to everyone. So you have to see the ROF in lead 1 and lead AVF. If it is positive in both, 
it will have a normal axis in this quadrant. If it is negative in lead one, positive in AVF, negative in V1, positive in AVF, that means it will have a right axis division. Exactly opposite, if it is a positive in lead one and negative in AVF, it will have a left axis deviation. If it is negative in both lead one and AVF, it will have a extreme axis deviation. Okay. Now coming to the second method, which is somewhat more precise. That is known as isoelectric lead method. Isoelectric lead method. Now, for all practical purposes, the quadrant method will solve most of our uh, problems. But sometimes uh, you may need to find out the exact or near <coughs> exact value of the axis. So, for that, this isoelectric method will be very helpful. Now, let us see how to find out axis through this isoelectric lead method. Okay. Now, how to apply this isoelectric lead method. Now, in this, there are uh, three steps. First, first of all, you have to find out which, which one is the isoelectric lead among these leads. You can see here, this is lead 1, this is lead 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF. Now, here the chest leads, that is V1 to V6 is not shown because that is not important for axis calculation. Okay. So, that's why it is not shown here. Axis calculation, you need this six leads. Okay. Now, in this isoelectric lead method, first step is, first step is uh, find out the isoelectric lead. Find out the isoelectric lead. Now, isoelectric lead means whichever lead has a uh, straight line, whichever lead has a straight line or whichever lead has R equal to S. The R equals to S or a straight line or a straight line. Now, in this six leads, uh, just try to find out which, which lead has R equal to S. So, if you see this AVL here, you can see the R and S are almost equal. Okay, R and S are almost equal. If you see the other leads, in lead 1, R is more. Lead 2, R is more again. Lead 3, R is more. Lead AVF, S is predominant. Lead AVF, again, R is more. So, only AVL has R almost equal to S. So, AVL, AVL is, AVL is the isoelectric lead. That is the first thing, isoelectric lead. Second point is, second point is, or second step is, you have to plus, you have to do plus 90 and minus 90 from the isoelectric lead, from the isoelectric lead. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you mean by that? So, AVL, if you see the previous image, what is the normal axis of AVL? It is minus 30. It is minus 30. So, you have to, you have to add plus 90 and you have to minus plus 90 to this axis. To, uh, to the axis of the isoelectric lead. So, if we see this, if here the normal axis is minus 30, so you have to add plus 90 and you have to minus plus 90. So, it will be plus 60 or it will be minus 120. Okay. So, it will be plus, plus 60 or minus 120. Now, you need to understand that the axis of this given ECG will be either plus 60 or minus 120 will be either plus 60 or minus 120. Now to find out which one is the correct answer, we have to go to the third step. Now third step is same as the quadrant method. Third step is same as the quadrant method. What is quadrant method? I told you have to see the lead 1 and lead FEF, 1 and FEF and then find out which quadrant the axis belongs. So again, this is lead 1, this is lead FEF. This is negative, this is positive side, this is negative, this is positive side. You can see here the lead one, in the lead one, RVB is predominantly positive. So, we will take positive in lead one. Then in the AVF also, you can see RVB is predominantly positive. So, again, here also we will take a positive one. Now, the net vector will be pre will present in, in this axis, in this axis, okay. Uh, sorry, in this quadrant, in this quadrant, okay. So, is it clear? So, uh, we have to apply in the third step, we have to apply the quadrant method and find out which quadrant the axis belongs. Now, in this case, the axis belongs to this quadrant between 1 and FF, between 0 to plus 90. Between zero, so, this is 0, this is plus 90. So, the axis is present between 0 to plus 90. Now, you see here, I told you that our axis will be either plus 60 or minus 120. Either plus 60 or minus 120. Now, among these plus 60, comes in this in this quadrant that is between 0 to plus 90 
So the final axis for this ECG will be plus 60. Final axis for this ECG will be plus 60. Remember that plus 60 is the normal axis of the earth. So this given ECG is the uh, given ECG is of a normal heart. Okay, so the axis here is plus 60. I'll, I'll repeat it again. In the isoelectric method, first of all, you have to find out the isoelectric lead. Isoelectric lead is the either it will have a straight line, either it will have a straight line, or it will have an equivalent R and S. R and S proportions will be same. So that is the first step. In this, the uh, the isoelectric lead is lead AVL. Then you have to find out what is the normal axis of that lead. That's why I told in the beginning that you have to remember the normal axis of this six leads. Okay, so AVL is minus 30. In the next step, you have to do plus 90 and minus 90. So it will be plus 60 or minus 120. So our axis will be either plus 60 or minus 120. In the third step, you have to apply the quadrant method and find out uh, which quadrant the axis will lie. Okay. So we found, found out that because R is positive in both 1 and AVF, the axis will be between 0 to plus 90 uh, range. Axis will be in the 0 to plus 90 range. So finally, among these two, plus 60 and minus 120, plus 60 will come in that uh, that quadrant. So the final axis will be plus 60. Okay, I hope you understood it well. Now we'll see one more issue and we'll try to find out the axis. Now in this again, we have to find out whichever is the isoelectric lead. I can see here that lead 2, lead 2 is isoelectric. So first step, we found that lead 2 is isoelectric lead. So here isoelectric lead is lead 2. Now, the, what is the normal axis of lead 2? It is plus 60. It is plus 60. Okay. Now, we have to do what? Plus 90 and minus 90. So, 60 plus 90 will be 150. That is plus 150. Minus 90 will be minus 30. Minus 30. Okay. Now, we have to see. We have to apply the quadrant method and we have to see what is the, uh, which quadrant the axis will lie. Now, if you apply the quadrant method, this is, uh, if you have, this is 1. Here, you can see the 1. In one, the R is negative. So it will come in this. I will come on this side on the negative side. And in the AVF, you can see the R is positive. So R will be coming here in the AVF. So the quadrant uh, in which the axis lies is this quadrant. Okay, you can tell this is as, as right axis deviation. This is as right axis deviation because the uh, axis is lying in this quadrant that is between plus 90 to plus 92 plus 120, plus 90 to plus 120, okay. So the axis will lie between 90 to 1, 1, sorry, between 90 to 180, okay. So among these two, among these two, plus 150 is lying between 90 and 180. So the final axis for this ECG will be plus 150, plus 150. Okay. So this is how we will uh, calculate. If you just apply the quadrant method for axis uh, calculation, you will find the which quadrant the axis lies, uh, whether there is a left axis deviation, right axis deviation, or there is the extreme axis deviation. And if you apply the isoelectric lead method, if you apply the isoelectric lead method, you may somehow find out the exact value of the axis. The exact value of the axis. Now, after finishing uh, axis, we'll go uh, to some of uh, more basics of the like that. That is the ECG lead position. Uh, about the rhythm, about the rhythm, I will not be telling you now because uh, 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 for uh, for understanding rhythm, uh, we need to understand a whole lot of things. Uh, so, uh, the rhythm interpretation and the arrhythmias, I'll be telling uh, as we read more and more in the subsequent lectures. Now this is very very easy and uh, if if you have already attending the clinics if you are an intern then it's very easy uh, for you. you you already must be knowing all these things now so this is the second intercostal space uh, I, I uh, you know uh, all of you must be knowing how to find out the second intercostal space and you can see this is the second intercostal space this is the third intercostal space this is the fourth intercostal space this is the fifth intercostal space now the leads are placed, uh, so V1 will be placed here in the right fourth intercostal space, just lateral to the sternum, right fourth intercostal space, just lateral to the sternum, that is the V1. V2 will be placed here, that is the left fourth intercostal space, just lateral to the sternum. Then V4 will be placed in the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line. 
then v5 in the fifth anticoagulant space mid axillary line sorry anterior axillary line then v6 uh, will be placed in the fifth anticoagulant space in the mid axillary line now where will you place v3 so v3 will be placed somewhere in between lead 2 uh, lead v2 and v4 okay so here there will be lead v3 okay so these are the chest lead position chest lead position so v1 in the fourth intercostal space uh, in the right fourth intercostal space lateral to the sternum v2 left fourth intercostal space lateral to the sternum v3 in between v2 and v4 v4 will be placed in fifth left fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line v5 left fifth intercostal space anterior axillary line and v6 left fifth intercostal space mid axillary line so as you can see here this is what i have already told v1 to v6 this is how we will place the leads now sometimes we need to find find out the right sided uh, chest leads so this is how you place the right sided chest leads you have to just reverse the uh, lead v3 to v6 towards the right side okay and this v2 will become v1r and v1 will become v2r okay very simple so v1r v2r v3r v4r v5r v6r right sided leads are uh, placed uh, to find out the right sided or right ventricular mis that we will be studying later now sometimes we may need to place the posterior leads okay so uh, what you have to do is you have to remove the v4 v5 and v6 from the anterior side and you have to put them on the posterior side so that will become v7 v8 and v9 v7 is the mid scapular line v8 is uh, just uh, below the scapula uh, just below the uh, inferior angle of the scapula and v9 is uh, just lateral to the uh, vertebrae and this this is uh, posterior leads and these posterior leads are used for used to identify the posterior wall mis that also we'll be studying later now there are certain uh, you know unique leads uh, though not much used in uh, routine clinical practice but uh, you should know the names. So this is known as Lewis leads. This is Lewis lead placement, Lewis lead placement, and this is uh, uh, this kind of lead placement is done to find out the atrial flutters. So flutter waves will be clearly seen if you place the leads like this. This is known as Lewis lead. Details of this are not required. Similarly, this is uh, known as Fontaine. This is known as fountain lead placement, fountain lead placement, and this is done to find out the epsilon wave. Okay, epsilon wave. Epsilon waves uh, we'll be studying later. This is seen in uh, uh, characteristically this is seen in uh, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. Okay, so that is epsilon wave, and the lead is fountain lead, fountain lead placement. So this is about the uh, the first ECG lecture in which we read about the rate and uh, axis interpretation along with the, some of the basics of lead placement. In the next lecture, we will be studying about the waves and then the intervals and segments. So that's all from uh, now.